Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm answering question number four from the S1 um, Solomon C. Uh, actually, it's question number seven from the S1 Solomon C Statistics One paper from, um, as I said, the Solomon Collection. And it's also question number number four from my end of topic worksheet on, um, on discrete random variables. Okay, worksheet number six from my S1. And one of the students has asked me to answer this question, so I'm going to do so. Now, it says a bag contains four red and two blue balls. All of, all of them are the same size. A ball is selected at random and removed from the bag. This is repeated until a blue ball is pulled out of the bag. Okay. The random variable B is the number of balls that have been removed from the bag. Show that the probability that B is equal to is equal to 2 is 4 over 15. Okay, so now, <clears throat> there are four red and two blue balls in the bag. So you've got four reds and you've got two blues. So you've got six balls altogether in the beginning. A ball is selected at random and removed from the bag. Okay, so it's taken out of the bag. And then this is repeated until a blue ball is pulled out of the bag. Okay, so you're taking the ball out, you're not putting it back in, and you're pulling another ball out. And then as soon as you get a, uh, if you know, as soon as the blue is pulled out, you stop this game, right? So that means if the probability that B is equal to 2, what that is, is the probability of picking a blue first. Um, sorry, probability of picking a red for the first ball and then a blue for the second ball. That's what, it, what we're looking for, because uh, you keep pulling a ball out of the bag until a blue is pulled, okay? That means if we want to find the probability that the number of balls that are pulled from the bag is two, that means the second ball must have been a blue, that means the first ball must have been a red, because you, you stop when a blue comes out. So the first couldn't have been a blue, but the second must be a blue. So that means the probability of picking a red first, and then a blue, okay? So now, the probability of picking a red first, okay, there are four reds out of six altogether. And then the second pick now, there's one less ball left in the bag, but both of them are blues. So it's going to be four, four over six times two over five. And if you simplify this, you see you're going to have here a one and a three. So it's four times one, which is four, over three times five, which is 15. And we can see that that's exactly what we had to show. So the probability that B is equal to 2 is 4 over 15, and we've shown that very clearly. And we know that we're on the right tracks in our thinking now, you see? And that's why a lot of these questions, they start off with part A, something like this, so that just for you to be sure that you're on the right tracks before you continue. Okay, now for part B. So part B says find the probability distribution of B. Okay, so that means, again, we've got four reds and we've got two blues in the back so we got to find all the different values that b can take now b here is the number of balls that are picked before a blue comes up okay so we can think about it like it could be um the the value of b here could equal um one it could be on the first pick that you pull out of blue or it could equal two which is what we just found up there first is a red and second is a blue um or it could be um, three. You could pick up the first three reds and then a blue. Okay, the first two reds, sorry, and then a blue. Or it could be four, because you pick up the first, it could be a red and a red and a red, and then a blue. Okay, um, and I think that's all there is to it. Is it if, could, you, could, you, could you have five? Um, you pick out, a, no, that's right. You could red, red, red blue and you're going to have red 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 and then a blue so there's actually five different values that p b can take you can have a blue on the first pick you can have a red on the first pick and a blue on the second pick that's when b equals two what we found you're going to have a red and then a red and then a blue on the third pick you're going to have a red and then a red and the red and then a blue on the fourth pick okay or you can have a red and a red and a red and then another red and then a blue on the fifth pick Okay, and that's as far as you can go. You can't go further than that because there's only four reds. So after you finish picking those four reds, the only thing that left is blues. So you will stop definitely on the fifth pick. So those are the possible values of the random variable B. So we got to find the probability of each of these random variables. 
Okay, so let's start with the probability that um, the random variable b is equal to 1. Well, that's pretty simple. It's just the first pick is going to be blue. That's 2 out of 6. So that's one third. Okay, and the probability that the random variable b is equal to 2 is what we found um, in the first part of the question, which was 4 over 15. Okay, so we've got two of the, the um, probabilities. We want the probability that B is equal to 3. Okay, so that means the first has to be a red. That's 4 over 6 times. And the second has to be a red. That's 3 over 5 times. And the third has to be a blue. That's 2 over 4. Okay, the third has to be a blue. So 4 over, th four over 6 times 3 over 5 times 2 blues over 4. And that gives us what? Let's simplify this. You can see that cancels with that. That gives you a 2 there. That cancels with that. 1 and a 1. The 2 cancels with the 2. You're left with just 1 over 5. Okay, so the probability that b equals 3 is equal to 1 fifth. And we can do the probability that b equals 4. That means you're going to have um, basically a red and then a red and then a red and then a blue. Okay, red and then a red and then a red and then a blue. Okay, so you're going to have uh, a red will be 4 over 6 times 3 over 5 times 2 over 4 times and then a blue, you're going to have 2 over 3. Okay, which will give us, let's see again, you're going to have 3 times 2 is 6, cancels with this 6, 4 cancels with this 4, we're left with 2 over 15. 2 over 15. These all cancelled out, right? Yeah, okay. So that's 2 over 15. And then finally, the probability that b equals 5 is going to be a red first, which is 4 over 6, times a red second, which is 3 over 5, times a red third, which is 2 over 4, times um, a red third, which is uh, 1 over 3, times a blue which is going to be 2 over 2, which is, of course, certain. Okay, then that's, of course, certain the next one's going to be a blue because you've picked four reds, there's only blues left. Okay, so now let's see what this gives us. Again, you've got four cancelling with the four. Three times two is six. This gives you one, of course. So you're left with one over 15. There's one over 15. So now we've got uh, the probability distribution has to be a table. So let me just do a table like this. We need uh, just five to so six of these. We'll do. Okay, good. So I can just make a bit of space. So we got probability. We got B is equal to. Um, this is this is the value of B. Okay, we'll use small b here, and this is the probability that B is equal to B. So you got. Possible values are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the probabilities of each of these values is 1 third, and 4 over 15, and 1 over 5 for 3, 2 over 15 for 4, and 1 over 15 for 5. And what we should try to make sure is that they add up to 1. Okay, let's, see, let's make sure they add up to 1, because um, then we can be sure that we're on the right tracks. So if, if we see the sum, we have one third. Let me make them all over 15, actually, so that it's easier. So this over 15 is 5 over 15, plus 4 over 15, plus 3 over 15, plus 2 over 15, plus 1 over 15. Well, that's 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. So we can see that they give you one, so we, 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 you know, I did that so that we're sure that we're on the right track. So that's a probability, probability distribution of B in this little table here. And now on to part C. Part C says find the expected value of B. E, B, the expected value of B. And the expected value is found quite simply by just multiplying the probability of each of these random variables by the random variable itself and adding them together. So the expected value of B is going to be 1 times a third plus 2 times 4 over 15 
plus 3 times 1 over 5 plus 4 times 2 over 15 plus 5 times 1 over 15 okay so this is going to give us this is like one um, one third I'll just make it out of 15 because we're going to add them together so that's out of 15 one third is uh, 5 over 15 yeah and this is going to be plus 8 over 15 and this is going to be plus um, 3 times that's actually 3 times 1 over 5 that's a mistake there 3 times 1 over 5 okay that's going to be 3 over 5 3 over 5 gives you 9 over 15 okay plus 8 over 15 plus 5 over 15 you've got to be careful here I, I made a mistake there when I did that 3 times 1 fifth and I put 3 times fifth, 1 over 15 it was 3 times 1 fifth okay good that I spotted that so I've just I've just basically made them all over 15 like this was 1 over 3 that's 5 over 15 and this was 3 over 5 which is 9 over 15 why so I can add together numerators easily so I have 5 plus 5 which is 10 10 plus 16 which is 26 26 plus 9 which is 35 over 15 which is 7 over 5 so that's expected value of v 7 over 5 um, actually sorry again I don't know what's happening to me this morning 7 over 3 divided by 5 15 divided by 5 is 3 so it's 7 over 3 sorry about that so that's the expected value of v 7 over 3 of course you can use a calculator for all of this if you want to okay and just make sure but yeah that's divided by 5 7 over 3 not 7 over 5 okay so that's part c done and now we're going to move on to part d and um part d uh, i'll do it on the next page okay so part d says the bag and the same six balls are used in a game at a fun fair one ball is picked from the bag at a time and a contestant wins 50 pence if one of the first two balls picked out is blue what are the expected winnings from playing this game once okay so let's just uh, get the table that we made I'll put it over here this is our probability distribution of picking balls out of the bag so the person wins 50 pence if one of the first two balls is picked out what are the expected winnings from playing the game once okay so basically the probability of winning is the probability of getting out the first pick and um, plus the probability of getting out the second pick which is going to be one third plus four over 15 which is that's uh 5 over 15 plus 4 over 15 which is 9 over 15 which gives you divided by 3 that's 3 fifths so that means the probability of winning is equal to 0 0.6 okay so the probability of winning is equal to 0 0.6 okay therefore the 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 expected winnings okay the expected winnings if you're gonna get 50 pence uh, for each game the expected winnings will be all right is 0 0.6 times 50 pence and 0 0.6 times 50 is 30 pence okay so the expected winnings for playing the game once is 30 pence okay because um, that's a probability of getting a win um, in this game the win is defined as getting a blue ball coming out in the either the first or the second pick okay so that's 0 0.6 um, probability and if the expected winnings is 50 pence for one game, it's 0 0.6 times 50 pence. Okay, now, for one pound, a contestant gets to play the game three times. What is the expected profit or loss from the three games? So, in, from the perspective of the contestant, he's paying one pound, okay, and he gets to play the game three times. So, uh, the expected profit if he plays it three three times and each time the expected winning is 30 pence you could say that um, he's going to have three times 30 pence would be his expected winnings from playing the game three times okay but he paid one pound to play the game in the beginning so if you take away from that one pound which is 100 pence okay one pound remember is 100 pence so you take away from that 100 pence you're going to have 90 minus 100 which is minus 10p so therefore you say for the contestant 
All right, if they're talking about this from the perspective of the contestant, then he has a loss of 10p. Okay, it's not clear what they're talking about here, whether they're talking about the perspective of the person who's, um, you know, running the game. Okay, the person who's running the game on the fair, he's going to make a profit of 10p. Okay, for for three games, according to these probabilities here. Whereas from the contestant's point of view, the one who's playing the game, which I think that's what they're asking about, his expected profit or loss is going to be a loss of 10p because he's got an expected winning of 90 pence from three games, but he's paid one pound to play those three games. So his expected loss will be 10p. Okay, so that's why they have these games in the first place. They know that the probabilities are going to be that they, the contestant loses money, so the people who run the games make money. Okay, so that's um, the answer to part E of question number four, and that concludes this question. Um, other questions that are from this Solomon C of S1 will be found on the playlist once I start answering more questions from this paper in the playlist that will be found in this area. And um, other questions from discrete random variables of S1, you will find them in this playlist here. And you can subscribe to the channel from clicking on this icon. And on the top of the, the, top of the page, you can find a card taking you to a past paper for S1. Thank you for watching and see you soon.